Charmed Ones. Today I'm going to share with you how I've organized my planner for 2022. And as I set my planner up, I'm also going to give you a process to follow for how to set up your 2022 planner as well. So let's jump in. The first thing I want to mention about my planner setup process is that this is, in fact, a process. For me, it's not as simple as sitting down and putting together my planner to be a carbon copy of last year's planner setup. I take much more time with it than that. So although many of the clips you're about to watch are me sitting down in the afternoon at my kitchen table watching that new movie Spencer while I set up my planner to kick off the process, this was realistically a process that took me several days to complete. So although the process could absolutely be quicker for you, just know that if you are someone who, like me, creates a truly custom planner set up for themselves each year, then it's okay if it takes you a while to understand what you want and get all of the pieces together. So let's not judge ourselves through this process or compare our planners to other people because your planner is a very personal tool and hopefully the system you put together now is going to last you several months, if not the entire year. So it's okay if it takes some time to make it feel right to you. Now, let's get into the process itself. The first step I take in setting up my planner for the new year is to review what worked, what didn't work, and what needs improvement in my previous planner setup. No matter if you used one planner the whole last year, or if you dabbled in multiple different planners, sizes, styles, bindings, etc., you need to get clear on what worked so you can integrate that into your new system. So ask yourself, which binding style did you like? What size inserts worked well for you? Which planner sections were useful for you? Which inserts and layouts did you use and enjoy? What aspects of your planner did you really enjoy or really inspired and motivated you to keep using your planner? What elements of your planner worked but might need improvement? What elements of your planner didn't work at all? What should just be removed or replaced entirely? And for anything that didn't work, I also like to ask myself, what was the purpose or intention I was trying to accomplish with this element of my planner that missed the mark? I think asking yourself these sorts of exploratory questions while flipping through your prior year planner can be immensely helpful to help you build a better system for yourself in the new year. For myself, I know that disc bound works for me. It's not perfect, but it gives me so much of what I really enjoy and need that I'm pretty much committed to the discs again for 2022. I also love half letter. That size insert overall really works for me and has for a very long time. So there's no need for me to reinvent the wheel and go for another size. I know I love my Chanel agenda cover. That's an aspect of my planner from 2021 that I intend to carry over into 2022 because it's just so beautiful and perfect. It makes me want to grab it and use my planner often. In terms of the planner layouts I used in 2021, since I design inserts, I used a lot of different types of inserts last year. Not all need to be in my system full time. Some I can just add and remove when needed, but my calendar inserts from the master planner are what I love to use. I used my month on two pages last year and that worked well. I used a week on one page and also supplemented it with a day on one or two pages, which is a system I like, but definitely needs some tweaking for 2022. And I'll show you how I worked that out in my walkthrough later on in this video. I also use my project planning pages from the master planner, as well as the brain dump inserts. I don't use my brainstorming inserts as much. And I think that's because I have so many specialty planning inserts specifically for my business that the brainstorm inserts are often a little redundant. I used my master meal planner inserts last year. The master meal list is essential for my meal planning. I also have some mindset and manifestation inserts that I love keeping in my planner. And then the final major component of my 2021 system was my CEO strategy planner. Now, I don't use all of my CEO strategy inserts, but I do use the executive summary, the annual, quarterly, and monthly business plan overviews, 
I do like to use the objective inserts and I also use a number of marketing inserts to manage my content ideas. In 2021, I also kept some financial planning inserts, but I rarely used those. So they are something I know I can let go of for 2022 because I do all my finance stuff digitally. So the inserts are a redundancy that doesn't add any value or use to my planner. Now, once I know what worked and what didn't, I will then go through my inserts for the prior year and archive inserts that I want to save, recycle inserts that I don't need to hold on to, and identify any inserts that have information on them that I may need to transfer to my current setup. I do like to save some elements of my past planners, and that's one of the many reasons I love disk bound systems so much, because I can easily create a little archive planner with some extra disks and store that away for future reference. I also do enjoy the process of transferring some key information from year to year in my planner instead of simply moving the insert over to the new year. I really like my planner to have that fresh start feeling and printing fresh inserts and writing out some information fresh does give me that feeling. Once my inserts have been sorted, I then like to clean my binder. Since I use a disc bound with a separate agenda cover that I plan to use and reuse year after year, it's important for me to keep it clean so that it lasts me for years to come. Since my cover is leather, I do use leather cleaning wipes for this. And the new year mark is just one of the many points in the year where I stop to give my binder a good clean. So the binder isn't that dusty because it's normally cleaned on a quarterly basis anyway. With my binder dry and looking like new again, I can then begin to repopulate my new 2022 inserts into my planner. A part of this process I did not show you is me printing, cutting, and punching my inserts. But once I knew what I wanted to keep for 2022 and what I wanted to change, I went through my collection of inserts and printed out what I needed. That's one of the major reasons I'm obsessed with printed home inserts. I love having instant access to my inserts and the ability to print as much as I need when I need them. It's so much more economical and convenient in my opinion, but you do need access to a printer and have the paper trimmer and punch for your binder. I know it's not for everyone, but I love it. Once your planner is assembled into a system of inserts that meets your specific needs and life, you're gonna need to pick your writing utensil. Now, this is another aspect of my planning where I prefer customization. Right now I'm using a cross ballpoint pen, which is refillable. So I have one dedicated pen that I prefer to use, but I also customized this pen by switching out the point for the finest ballpoint refill that cross offers. Those who've been following me for a while know that I love a deep dark black ink, but I also prefer a fine point, which is usually only a combination that you can find in gel ink pens but I just don't have much success with gel ink personally. I much prefer the way the ballpoint feels when you're writing. So it's nice that I can get a fine ballpoint tip with this pen and the ink actually is pretty deep dark in my opinion. Okay, so now that we've got the planner set up, I know you wanna see a walkthrough of everything that's in it. So let's go ahead and jump into an overview. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what is inside of my 20. 22 planner setup. So the first thing let's go ahead and talk about is how I've switched up my inner pockets. So I'm definitely someone who, although I'm not into pretty planning per se with like stickers and washi, I still like to make sure that my planner looks cute and inspirational. So um, I do have a few things here in the pockets of my planner because I really don't use them for any sort of like practical or functional storage. They're much more for like inspiration and prettiness factor. So here I have like a piece of card stock with like a pretty pattern printed on it. Um, I have um, a really pretty little Chanel paper clip. This laminated card that says like coffee, glasses, laptop, etc. These are like some of my fun little journaling, journaling cards that I make for myself. And I have this here, it kind of looks like a bookmark, but it's my 10 Habits of Highly Successful Women post. I really love this, nice little inspirational post to put in the front of my planner. And then I've got these really cute um, sticky notes. I think I got these from Walmart with the grid. I like, I like having the grid on them. So that's what I've got in the front of my planner here. And then I also have one of these zip, zip pockets from Staples, like 
their arc system it has my inbox zero it has this set of like chanel stickers that i actually got as like a gift i think like a year or two ago from them for like purchasing makeup offline um, I have this little laminated card here that is my workday productivity affirmations. And actually on the back of that, I've put another one of my like inspirational graphics. So here this, you can see that. And then on the back is 22 things to manifest in 2022. You guys may be familiar with these if you follow me on Instagram. So if you're not, make sure you're following me at Miss Trenchcoat. Now I'm going to take a minute to <laughs> rearrange this the way I like it. Okay. Uh, no, go back yet. Yeah, there we go. Okay, not the end of the world. On the back, you can see I also have a couple more of these journaling cards. Um, and then I have this piece of, I guess, embossed cardstock. It's embossed to look like, I guess, alligator print. And this is where I have my pen loop. Now, I used to keep this in the back of my planner, but the, my pen used to hit on the tabs too much, so I moved it to the front. Oh, and this is actually a really good view. You can actually see um, if with the discs that I'm using, I'm actually using the Levenger tortoise shell discs this year. I know I normally like to use the black aluminum ones. I think they may be from Levenger or they're from 11 discs maybe. Normally I use black three quarter inch aluminum because I do think the aluminum discs actually turn better, but I really wanted something with like a little bit of contrast this year. So the tortoise is still nice and dark, but it does it does put a contrast in there. But they are like hard plastic or acrylic, whatever they are, so they're not aluminum. So they're not as, they don't, the, the pages don't turn as smoothly in my opinion. Okay, so now we have some inserts. These inserts are some like forward planning, yearly overviews that I make available to my mastermind. So this is like a yearly overview of the months where you can kind of like map out things going on in your year that I like to use for forward planning. A little 2022 divider, year on one page calendar, holiday calendar, another little forward planner. This is great for perpet uh, like a perpetual planner or a perpetual calendar, I think is what it's called, where you can put like birthdays, anniversaries, like events. And we have like the little mini monthly calendars. This is a monthly task list, again, for each of the months of the year. Now, something you're gonna notice when we get to this section is I only have three months, one quarter of inserts for my weekly and monthly calendars in my planner at one time. But one of the things that I like to you know, do in my planning is have like a master monthly task list. So sometimes I get tasks that I know are like one-off tasks that have to be assigned to a specific month. Maybe it's like a bill that I've gotten in the mail I need to pay. Or usually it's something personal, right? This isn't so much for my business, but usually it's some sort of thing that pops up for life and I need to assign it to the month it belongs to. This is a way that I can kind of forward plan tasks. This is more like forward planning events. And then this is for tasks, right? So I can have like a full year at a glance. So if something comes in, I can write it down, right? So tasks. This is also another one of my yearly tasks planning inserts. I absolutely love this one. So this is for tasks that I may do recurring throughout the year, usually things that I do like about once a month. So I keep one side of this for business and one side is like personal things that I need to do on like um, about a monthly basis, right? So that's another way that I organize my tasks. And I just have this vellum divider with my master plan graphic. And then we get to the calendar portion of the 2022 master planner. So here is a year on two pages. I realize it's a really, it's a little bit redundant having the year on one page with the year on two pages, but I do like them both. So I do keep them in here. Then I have my yearly tracker. Right now, I'm using my tracker to keep track of like health and my personal cycle. So that is what I will use this for, kind of marking off days that certain health things or, you know, my cycle happens. Here is the yearly overview. This is on four pages. And this is, as you guys may know, if you've been following me for a while, this is like my astrological planning cal uh, calendar. So I put in things like new moons, Mercury retrograde, when the sun moves into a new sign, um, Jupiter and Neptune are in conjunction <laughs> in April. So I just have some astrological events that are mapped out on 
um, this insert for me to keep track of just for reference. And then we get to my monthly calendar. So as you, as I said before, I just have three months of actual dated calendar and agenda inserts in here. This is my month on two pages, right? So nothing populated yet, but this is my month on two pages spread. And following that is my monthly task spread. Now, what is new <laughs> in my planner is this tracker page and the weekly pages that I'm actually using for 2022. As I mentioned, when we were setting up my planner or deciding how we were going to set up my planner earlier in this video, I talked about how I was using week on one page and then also like day on one page or day on two page inserts as my like weekly daily agenda calendar, right? But I actually went ahead and designed completely new inserts for myself to test out for Q1. So the top page here is still my normal monthly tracker, right? In the master planner, if you have the master planner, you know that the weeks all start, you know, every month, the week portion of your planner starts off with this tracker page where you can track out three objectives, your weekly actions, and then your daily actions, right? So like daily habits, things that you do on a weekly basis, and then three big objectives or projects or goals that you're working on for the month. Then I have designed this new week on two pages calendar. So this is kind of like mixing how I was planning last year into one insert. So here you can see I have a space for weekly objectives, reminders, right? So the objectives is so I can stay focused on what I actually have to accomplish in a week, like what the most important things are. My reminders are normally for events or like some, if a bill is due or I have to do something one off that's outside of my schedule, I'll put it in here. Then my task section is broken into business and personal tasks. It's the first time I've actually really ever done that on one spread for the week. So I wanna see how it will work out, right? So this is a way that I can balance my personal life and my business life in my weekly planner. Then at the bottom here, I also have another habit tracker. I realize that it may seem redundant to have the habit tracker on your weeks and on this monthly tracker, but when it comes to like what I'm doing on a daily basis, I'm not flipping back to this very often, right? So I'd rather have it also in my weeks and check off what I got done. And then I can kind of go back and populate this larger tracker here for the entire month. I, that just works for me, right? Then on the right side of the spread, we have essentially like a week on one page. Each day of the week has my top three, which is one of my like ride or die planning strategies to set the top three things you're focused on each day. But then it also has a blank space here as well. The reason I have a blank space is because with the way my business works that I create a lot of content and I have a lot of things that are scheduled to go out for certain times, I like to be able to kind of keep track of let's say like what content is, is going out on on a Saturday. Like usually my YouTube video is on a Saturday. So here I can actually write, you know, YouTube video live at like 8 a.m., right? And then it's not interfering with my top three. In the past, something that I've struggled with to a small extent is managing writing down those few scheduled items I have in a day with my top three of like, what are the actual things I have to do that day, right? So sometimes the thing that's scheduled is one of the things I'm working on, in which case it's not a problem. But if it's something where I just want the information on my calendar, right, and it's not something I have to take action on, this kind of gives me the ability to see everything at once, right? Because I'm not someone who generally works off of a schedule. A schedule does not work for me. Um, there are some times when I do supplement my weeks with, like I said, day on one page, day on two page inserts. And sometimes those inserts are timed out, like they have a place for a schedule. But more often than not, I just, if I need more space for a day, it's because there's a day that has a lot of tasks to be managed, right? And maybe some posts that need to, I need to have my eye on. So I'm, I'm thinking that this is going to be a better middle ground for me um, so that I don't have to be using daily pages as often. Nothing wrong with using them, but um, I find that I don't often need them. Like a day per page, usually there's a lot of space that's wasted. And so this is kind of my middle ground to help me keep track of daily to-dos and any little scheduled things, plus the entire overview of what I'm focused on, what I have to remember, and then like what my actual tasks for the week are. Okay, so that is that. Oh, and then at the end of the month with these inserts, 
I have this little monthly review that I kind of built in here. So it has here what worked, what didn't work, tasks to migrate. So anything that was in the month that I didn't get done that might need to be migrated, I can list them out and then what I've learned, right? So if there's insights or things to help me plan better in the future, that monthly review is there. Now, I guess I should mention to you guys, like I said, this isn't something that, this is an insert that I'm testing right now. And I actually only created Q1 for myself for 2022. This isn't something that I've made available for anyone to buy, but it is an insert that I've given to my mastermind as well. So the mastermind has this as well. And some people are, you know, probably going to use it. Some people might, but might not. But this is a way for me to test it and for my community to test it as well. And if we like it, this insert may end up becoming something that's added to the master planner for the launch for the 2023 master planner. <laughs> it's so crazy to think 2023, I'm still in 2021 right now, next year's 2022. And the inserts I'll be working on, you know, next year will be for, you know, 2023. So that is the inserts. Those are the calendar and agenda inserts that I'm using. And like I said, three months populated. Then we get to the next section of the master planner, my projects. This is my yearly project tracker, which gives me the ability to see everything I'm working on at a glance. Anything that is, uh, you know, a one month objective or project goes here. Anything that would last a quarter goes in the quarters. And anything that's something I do, you know, over the course of the year or like in a half of the year goes on this larger section, right? So this is how I can kind of see everything that's going on in my year at a glance. Then I also added this year this project tracker page to the master planner as well. So I'll be able to actually list out specific projects by name, their due date, and track their progress. And then we go to the project plans, right? So I have a number of these project plans in here. They're blank right now, but I do have like an entire list I'm still working on on my computer, which are all the projects that I need to make a project plan for, okay? So that's that section, another you know, pretty little vellum. This is something that's been in my planner for years at this point. Next part of the master planner, brain dump. This is something that I do keep in my planner um, because I do believe in doing brain dumps as often as necessary. First page here is a brain dump triggers list. That's not something that's part of the master planner. It's like a one-off insert that I've created. It's probably a free download. But then here is the spread for the brain dump, right? So I have an ability to brain dump everything, and then organize it on this side with an Eisenhower matrix. Love that. And I don't really have very many populated right now. So uh, then we get to the brainstorm section. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the brainstorm section is another section I really don't use very often. And that's only because I find that over the years, <laughs> I've created so many other custom inserts that I don't normally need to brainstorm with this anymore. But I do, let's be honest, I might use like one or two in the year. So I'm, I just have them in there and I have the section for it. I'd rather have the section than not have it. Then my notes section. And what I've got here is my master meal list. This comes from my uh, master meal planner. And this is basically a list of all of my favorite meal ideas or like my go-to meal ideas broken out by breakfast, lunch, dinner, or a snack or dessert. So when I'm doing my meal plan, I can look at this list and say, okay, what do I want to eat, <laughs> right? And these are like some of my ideas broken out, right? Now we get to the rest of my note section. Sometimes I populate this section with my actual note paper from the master planner. But lately, my absolute favorite insert, this has been my absolute favorite insert, absolute plain blank paper, right? So for me, honestly, can't beat plain blank paper for notes, right? I can do whatever I want on this. I can draw on it. I can sketch out an insert. I can map out a funnel. <laughs> I can do so many things with an insert like this, just paint plain paper, right? So I, that's what I have populated right now in the note section, but I do have other notes like my meeting notes and other like grids and things like that that I've also designed insert wise, but I'm not, I don't generally populate my planner at the start of the year with them. I'll just go grab them one off when I need them. And speaking of grabbing them one off, this is probably a good time to just kind of segue into this. This is my Louis Vuitton desk agenda thing. And if you can see, this thing is stacked full of other inserts. So although I have my planner already populated with like what I know I'll be using, I also have a whole bunch of other ones in here. So if there is an insert that I need, like I have a meeting and I wanna take meeting notes on my meeting notes, Insert, I could just go and pull it out of, pull it out of here, right? 
So that's how I actually survive with discs that are just three quarter because I have another gigantic planner with all inserts ready to go. So I'm not necessarily always printing inserts like in the moment when I need them. I usually just grab them from my auxiliary binder, which is what I call that Louis Vuitton. So I hope that explains my notes section. Next section of my planner, one of my favorite sections is my manifest, manifestation section. Um, I have here like a little graphic I've made of an emotional vortex. If you're familiar with the law of attraction, you know what that is. Um, I have affirmations in here. I also keep like my new beliefs in here, things that I'm trying to believe. And this section, I something that is on my 22, 2022 planner prep, just like yearly prep, is I need to actually create a complete list of new affirmations and new beliefs and print those out and put them in here. So these are the ones from last year, but I will most likely be replacing these. Then I have a few other one-off inserts that are in here. This is a self-awareness journal insert. This is something that my mastermind gets. Um, but this is really good for when I'm like stuck in my head and I'm having like anxiety to do really some like very targeted journaling. Then here I also just have a couple of extra pages of just like these blank, I consider them like my manifestation journaling inserts. But when I want to like write some things down, like new intentions or, you know, affirmations or whatnot, or if I want to do a little scripting, these inserts, I just like them, right? I could use blank paper, but I have some nice custom inserts that I prefer, so I use those. Then in this section, I also have my astrological insights. So I've got my birth chart here with some information on planets and my high vibe rituals. So for me, my high vibe rituals that I consider that I do on a regular basis are I like to do a um, actual like ritual routine sort of a thing we'll say like that's mostly journaling and intention setting and self-care for the new moon and the full moon so what i have here is just the inserts for the next cycle of new moons which is capricorn in the beginning of january and then the full moon in cancer which will be later in january as well so i just have the inserts ready to go for those and i generally will just keep you know a month at a time for these just one cycle of new and full moon and then once you know the new cycle begins, I'll take these out, put them in my, you know, storage binder, and then repopulate the new, the new month's inserts. And now we get to the final section of my planner setup, which is my CEO strategy planner. So here's just like another little vellum, my CEO sort of like divider page, and this is my CEO strategy planner inserts. So Starting off, I have my CEO business brain dump triggers list. This is always helpful for me to get like my ideas out. And then I get to my business plans, right? So here's my executive summary and brand vision and things like that. These are inserts that I will repopulate based on like what I had in my old inserts. Like I was mentioning earlier in the video, I do prefer sometimes to just print out fresh inserts and rewrite them, right? And especially when it comes to my business, you know, some things are not going to change, right? My business name tagline, my business values, you know, they, those don't change, but I might want to tweak, you know, my manifesto. I might want to tweak, you know, like who my ideal customer is, right? Or how I market to my customer this year, right? So, and like my brand vision for the next like year, three years, five years, 10 years, right? So these are inserts that I will repopulate. Then I have my yearly business plan overview with breakdown of the quarters, everything that I want to get done this year. Again, nothing's actually been populated yet, but I will be doing that after I record this video. <laughs> uh, my objectives for the year, my business objectives mapped out for the year, and then my quarterly business plan. And then I have monthly business plans in here as well, right? So January, February, and March. So like, again, I only keep one quarter at a time in my planner, and then I pull them out, put them in storage, and then repopulate with the new quarter. The next section in the CEO planner that I keep in here is my objectives. So this is what like an objective page looks like. I don't have all of them created yet. I have to decide what plans of mine are going on a business objectives and which plans are going on my project plans, right? So that's something I need to work out, but I will, by the time the year starts, I will have whatever projects and things are being worked on for the first quarter in my planner. I also have some CEO Power Hour inserts, right? So my CEO Power Hour is my monthly business coaching call that I now just do in my mastermind. So I just have a couple of these. Then we get to the final section, which is my marketing plan, right? So I have a couple of these content brainstorms for the month and then this like content planner for the month as well. 
That's three of these, right? Because we're doing the first quarter of the year. Then I have a couple of these content outlines. Sometimes when I have ideas for content, I like to just jot down some aspects like the key points, the call to action, if there's an opt-in or any other sort of media I need for that, just to help keep track of my ideas. I don't always map out all of my content this way. Most of my content just gets mapped out on my computer and my Apple Notes app. But every once in a while, I will think of something like on the go and I just want to jot it down. Not necessarily on the go like I'm out of the house, but just like I'll be in my planner, I'll have an idea, and instead of pulling out <laughs> the you know, my Apple notes or my computer, I'll just jot down some things on here. So it's just nice to have a couple of those. And then we get to this content tracker. So again, I'm currently in the process of generating some ideas for content plans. Once I have uh, content ideas, I'll be able to list them out. And this sort of tracker helps me to, you know, keep, keep track of the process, right? So creating the message, the media, is it scheduled? Have I promoted it, et cetera. So I have a couple of these already in here. And then I've got a couple of my campaign builders. So for my marketing campaigns, I create a campaign builder, right? And these are all inserts from the CEO strategy planner, right? And on the back is a broadcast tracker. Then in the very back here, I kind of use this as a page lifter. I don't know if you can see it. This is a sleeve that you can say it says Chanel on it. Whenever you buy like makeup off Chanel.com, the receipt always comes like in this sleeve. So I've got a couple of these actually. And I just pump a punched it and put it in here and I actually can stick things in here. I think, is there anything in here? There might just be like, oh yeah. I just have some like <laughs> random journal cards in there right now. But this is kind of like my page lifter slash planner pocket, but I really don't use it. Um, and then my disc bound is just slid into the back here. So that is an overview of how I have my 2022 planner populated. So I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this video and seeing how I set up my planner for 2022. And I hope it's given you a nice process to follow for you setting up your planner in 2022 as well, if you're like me and you like to do a customized system. If you did enjoy the video, I would so appreciate it if you'd give the video a thumbs up and feel free to share it with anyone you think would find it helpful. For more of the behind the scenes of my productivity life and business, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Ms. Trenchcoat. And if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos by me. And until next time, bye bye